For Session Update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. Republican authors of a resolution that would ask the U.S. Secretary of Transportation to deny the matching funds for Southwest Light Rail Transit and instead provide that funding in a block grant for road and bridge projects called a press conference on Monday. Here's that press conference. Good afternoon. On a wonderful spring day, don't you think? <laughs> today, today, the Minnesota State Senate took the first step in preventing a $2 billion taxpayer boondoggle from being rammed down the throats of Minnesotans by an unelected, unaccountable group of Metro liberals. Senate Resolution 51 and the pending House Resolution that Representative Linda Rudbeck will be authoring today asked for the Federal Transportation Administration to deny the $900 million plus federal matching funds for the construction of Southwest Light Rail in the metropolitan area and block grant the funds to the state legislature to spend on transport, transportation priorities that Minnesotans actually want. Since its inception, Southwest Light Rail has received exactly zero votes in either the House or the Senate. Think about that. The largest single taxpayer public works project in the history of Minnesota and not one up or down vote. That ends today. Be it a last minute floor amendment that was never agreed upon in the Senate or dissolving CTIB, there is a concerted effort to sidestep the Minnesota State Legislature. That the unaccountable, unelected Met Council solely appointed by Governor Mark Dayton is intentionally and willfully seeking to backdoor this project around the voters and around the elected legislature. One of the components of the transportation, uh, Federal Transportation Administration's grant process is to review local support for a project. It's time for Minnesota to stand up to Mark Dayton's Met Council and tell him to end this project now. And we're asking that the federal uh, FTA gives us that block grant so we can spend it on the priorities of Minnesota. I now introduce the author of the House Resolution, Representative Linda Runbeck. Good afternoon. I do like the height of this new podium in the, in the press corps room. Um, I'm Linda Runbeck, a state representative from District 38A in the northern suburbs. And uh, really alongside of Senator Osmek, uh, we've been working on the Southwest Light Rail issue for a number of years. This is the first opportunity we've had, uh, given that the Senate and the House are in, this, in the same majority by the Republicans, is to actually be able to, to do something about it. Uh, and I think you covered the, the subject very well, which is that we have an unelected body that is not accountable to any other elected official save one. Uh, and does not even feel itself necessarily required to, to, to uh, engage the public um, in terms of how this project is being developed. And I think it's fitting that today we also heard to, uh, of plans to reform the governance of the Metropolitan Council. Uh, Southwest Light Rail is probably emblematic, the most emblematic project of what happens when you have an entity such as it is, extremely powerful, with very little accountability and, and very little oversight. It's a project that has failed on so many counts to be developed in a thorough, uh, neutral, um, a public way that people have had an opportunity to weigh in on. Uh, and I think if you read the language of our resolution, uh, I think you'll see itemized the many ways in which this project is failing the taxpayers. Because not only is the construction cost out of this world, $2 billion, but that's, it's not over at that point. The news flash is that the public is gonna be required into perpetuity to continue to subsidize the operating costs. And some 25 years down the road, they'll be subsidizing the replacement costs. Um, that I think is a, is a big news item to most folks. They think that these uh, transit operations are, are always cost effective and pay for themselves. The truth is that fully 66%, two thirds of the cost is paid for by statewide taxpayers and that's been rather long standing. Uh, um, but um, so we're sitting now with about $56 million a year is the subsidize, subsidized cost from the state taxpayer. And that is without Southwest Light Rail and about six other projects, seven other projects that are waiting in the wings. Southwest Light Rail is on a mad dash to get all of its work done so that um, 
the legislature cannot get involved <clears throat> and weigh in on this project. So we saw last week that $700 million in, in bids are being let for all the pieces to this project, which includes some 29 bridges, uh, six tunnels, uh, you name it. It is an enormous, enormous project. And what are we doing it for? Is it for mobility? I mean, that's what most people would assume. But it is not about mobility. Light rail transit is the most high cost, low capacity, and really obsolete form of transit that is out there today. Uh, and yet we are going ahead with the project as it is. We also know that the subsidies do not end with the operating costs. We're looking at uh, the Met Council is, is subsidizing uh, the reconstruction of some of the light rail, or rather the rail, the freight rail that is running in the corridor and for about nine miles along the route. So they are actually spending enormous amounts of money rebuilding the freight track for the company that operates that track. They're also buying land along uh, side the, the route. The, um, I think Met Minnehaha uh, Watershed District has actually been the partner, but they have been buying land. And that's so that more subsidies uh, from the taxpayer can be used to subsidize commercial and residential development along the route. So there's so many reasons that um, we feel that this is the time. Uh, if we don't do this now, we are, are saddled with an enormous cost uh, to the taxpayer. We feel it's our, our due diligence to them. I'm going to introduce now to follow up um, one of the activists that's been very involved in uh, South Minneapolis as they have tried to get the attention of the Met Council about this project. And that is Mary Paddock. So welcome, Mary. Thank you. I am Mary Paddock, and I am here to represent LRT Done Right, a grassroots organization of some 450 citizens. Note that the vast majority of us, including me, would not be immediately impacted by Southwest LRT. In other words, are not NIMBYs. And just for the record, I'm a liberal. <laughs> As are many we of my. We forgive you for that. <laughs> it's mutual. <laughs> We thank uh, Representative Runbeck and Senator Osmek and their colleagues for sponsoring this resolution. First of all, it alerts the FTA to grave concerns that many thinking, responsible people have about Southwest LRT. And just as importantly, it creates a context for much needed public discussion instead of closed door discussions about Southwest LRT in the legislature. For years, People in our group have tried in vain to get the Met Council to respond to our concerns, but they show us only a blind eye and a deaf ear. It's as if they feel they are unaccountable to the public, because they are not. The Met Council, one of the most powerful public entities in the state, is completely unelected and remains the only such body in the United States so they can afford to ignore our tough questions. We are pleased to see our four main concerns reflected in the resolution. First of all, safety. Southwest LRT's electric wires would run immediately next to freight trains that carry millions of gallons of explosive ethanol through residential neighborhoods and under the Twin Stadium. This is an issue that also troubles the railroads as well as Minneapolis Fire Chief John Freudel. Second, equity. The proposed light rail avoids the very areas where people most need public transportation. Third, the environment. The route would devastate one of the most beautiful and most visited areas of Minneapolis's famous signature chain of lakes. It would destroy some 44 acres of urban forest and prairie restoration project. And it would actually add 2,000 more cubic meters of greenhouse gas into the environment than if it were not built. Many liberals think that this is an environmentally kind project. It is not. And finally, it is not cost effective. As has been noted, it's the costliest public works project in Minnesota history. The price tag is mind-boggling, $2 billion. That is three times the cost of sending the New Horizons spacecraft to Pluto. 
And what is the payoff for this huge expenditure? As Congressman Martin Sable, DFLer, nationally recognized expert on transportation finance, said two and a half years ago, it is meager. The Met Council admits that Southwest would only take 6,500 cars off the road, and not until the year 2040, 23 years from now. So do the math. At $2 billion, it'll cost $300,000 per car to get it off the road. Surely, there are more cost-effective ways to address transit, especially as we find ourselves at the threshold of exciting new transportation technologies that would be safer, spare the environment, provide better service to more people, and be more cost-effective. So thank you once more, Representative Runbeck and Senator Osmek and your colleagues for opening up discussion on these important issues. We look forward to an outcome that we will agree is just like the name of our organization, LRT Done Right. Lawmakers were asked when they expected to get the bills to their respective floors. Uh, I would expect from the Senate side, I believe this is going to be, it was referred to transportation. Uh, I would expect to have a hearing there uh, and then move, uh, move out, of the, uh, out of transportation. And, you know, getting things to the floor can be problematic depending on where we are in the session. Uh, and there's a lot of priorities that I know Senator Newman has for the Transportation Committee. Um, I'll let uh, Representative Runbeck speak to the House side. Um, but I'm optimistic we can get this in this session. I, we really haven't chatted about when it will come up, um, but there will be, you know, no difficulty in getting this resolution through the House. Um, we're very confident of that. And uh, we long to have this discussion about the viability and the affordability of this particular line. We're also making contacts to our federal representatives. A copy of this resolution is going to be provided to each of our 10 federal representatives, two senators, three or eight congressmen. Um, and I also have on my schedule to speak with the new Secretary of Transportation and express to her that Minnesota, the Minnesota legislature has never approved this project. This has never received a vote. There has never been a bill that, is, that has provided the, the matching funds that actually is listed in, in our state statutes. There's never been support for this, and part of the grant process is, does, is there local support? And the answer is no, and these resolutions clearly describe that. A reporter pointed out that five cities were in support of Southwest Light Rail. Five cities can make a decision, but the, when you're talking about a $2 billion project, that taxpayers of Minnesota, not the taxpayers of Eden Prairie necessarily, specifically, or any of those, if those five cities want to pony up uh, all of the money on operating costs, which is $20 million a year, feel free to have them do that. They're playing monopoly money with the legislature's money. And we think if you're going to demand 20 to $25 million a year in operating subsidies, you should come to the legislature first not to the cities first, because we're subsidizing that. Uh, <clears throat> Next step over. I might mention, uh, with respect to the city of Minneapolis, it was sort of with a gun to their heads that the city of Minneapolis agreed to uh, this route. And very openly, that was sort of behind closed doors discussion, as we all remember. But um, the disagreement from the Minneapolis Park Board was very open, and they only capitulated when the governor threatened $3.2 million be deducted from their budgets. Senator Osment clarified his position on transit. Representative Runbeck and I are not against transportation in Minnesota. I am a huge supporter of the Suburban Transit Association, which are what some sometimes called the opt-out carriers. They are uh, carriers that provide express service into Minneapolis, that, whether that be Southwest Transit, Minneapolis, or Plymouth Metro Link, Maple Grove Transit, each one of those carriers is providing exceptional service that people want twice the speed of anything that you project on Southwest Light Rail. Southwest Light Rail will deliver them at half the speed, and meanwhile these coach buses with Wi-Fi can deliver mill millennials, because everybody worries about millennials, can deliver them at twice the speed to downtown Minneapolis and they can enjoy Wi-Fi on their games or whatever they happen to do. It's, a no-brainer, and I think Representative Runbeck and I are open 
to talking about the A-Line, which is the new express bus service that is going between Rosedale Center and the, and the light rail line. Creating more of a circular motion where if, instead of having go into Minneapolis on a bus and then come back out, that we create a circular system where you could come in, hit a spoke or a, a, a section of the wheel and get faster to where you want to go. We're all in favor of that, but not a $2 billion boondoggle that's the gift that keeps on taxing. 